Welcome to Dock Edge's dock building DIY. Today, we're gonna build a six foot by 16 foot floating dock with these Howell 550 floats. Now, if you're wondering what parts you wanna use for building these docks, you can go to Dock Edge's website where they have a whole bunch of dock building guides. And you can use this video to build pretty much any of the floating docks from Dock Edge. What do you say, Brad, should we get to it? Let's do it. The first thing to do is find a wide, level spot near the water to lay out the basic hardware and lumber using the respective guide found on the Dock Edge site. Floating docks use blue labeled or blue dot components. Dock Edge hardware systems are designed for use with one and a half inch lumber with the minimum size for stringers being six inches. In this case, we are using pressure treated two by sixes for the stringers. So it's really important to find a suitable location to lay everything out and it's really handy pro tip to lay each piece out on the ground with all the hardware to make sure you've got everything right now. It's also pretty handy to have a little bit of spare lumber just in case you make a wrong cut on a Sunday. Now on the Dock Edge website there are plans you can print out and bring with you and these are also really handy. Once the wood and connectors are all laid out, bring in the floats and use them to set the perimeter and align all stringers. If you are unsure which float or how many to use, there is a flotation capacity formula in the online how-to guide to help calculate the required number of floats. For this six foot by 16 foot dock, we are using six Howell 550 floats. Smaller docks can be easier to build upside down with the floats on top, but larger docks may be too heavy to flip over. In this case, we are building it upside right so that we won't have to flip it over later. Pro tip number one, with the floats in place and centered, use three inch deck screws to attach the outer stringers together before drilling any holes and bolting the steel corners in place. Deck screws will hold the stringers in place while allowing easy adjustments if out of square. Check squareness from corner to corner using an X pattern as shown in the plan. These two measurements should be within a quarter of an inch to each other. Assembling with deck screws makes it really easy to square. And once you've got it square and you've got the middle floats in the center of the platform, it's time to put the joists in place. And these really help guide the position and help trap the floats where they're gonna be. Now, don't worry, there is hardware to hold the floats in place, but you can see here, the floats are trapped, but there's still enough room to manage the hardware later on. It's a good idea to keep checking the frame is square as you add each stringer before bolting on any of the steel hardware. Once you have the frame assembled, level and square, it's time to drill and mount the corner hardware. All floating dock hardware is heavy duty quarter inch hot dipped galvanized steel with 9 16 inch holes for half inch carriage bolts all designed to last. For docks up to 12 feet in length, you can use inside corner plates. Since this one is 16 feet long, we are using corner hardware that bolts to the outside. Pro tip number two, if using outside corners, lightly bevel the outside corner of the wood stringers with a sander. This will help the steel corner hardware sit flush against the stringers. To avoid damaging a wood bit, mark the hole centers before drilling. When drilling, be sure to protect the floats with a backer plate, or even better, move the float out of the way from the drill bit so as not to accidentally drill through it. Every single corner, both inside and out, gets hardware. In this case, we were drilling 48 holes to install 48 carriage bolts. Pro tip number three, Dock Edge uses half-inch carriage bolts to secure the hardware. While you can use a half-inch drill bit, it is much easier to drill 5 8 inch holes, allowing some flexibility in aligning the bolts to the backer plates. Now to get your backing plate flush, you're going to want to scrape off the wood. You don't need a special tool, you just use the backing plate itself. If you don't do this, you'll find it may not sit flush later. Always use backer plates when mating hardware components together. 
framework of the dock structure should always be sandwiched between hardware pieces at every joint location. And always use a lock washer with each carriage bolt to prevent nuts from loosening over time. Now the floats do have little pockets in them, so you can get a crescent wrench behind, but if you slide the float over, you can either get a ratchet on it, socket on it, or a handy impact driver, way faster. Until the battery dies. <laughs> One of the great things about the dock edge hardware kits are the carriage bolts have these square flanges and all the plates have a square hole, which means you don't have to put a wrench on this side. You're only putting a wrench on the nut side and that makes it a lot easier to put together. With the stringer hardware secure, mount the floats with 4-inch lag bolts. Mounting the floats is a bit easier if the dock is being built upside down. Since we are building upside right, we just need to lift one side at a time to provide room for the drill and bit. Always drill pilot holes for lag bolt installation, and always use a large flat washer for every lag bolt. With the floats secure, the next step is to install the deck lumber. Now depending on how many people you have, you may want to consider moving the dock closer to the water before putting the deck boards on. If attaching your floating dock to a stationary dock, it's not a bad idea to float it in place and mount the connectors before installing the deck boards. In this case, we are using dock edge chain retainers with 5 16 galvanized steel chain. Two and a half inch deck screws are ideal for securing five quarter inch boards, but note the orientation of the boards. Decking lumber is milled to have one cap or crown surface, which will allow water to flow away from the deck surface. When mounting the deck boards to the dock frame, it is recommended to fasten the decking cap or crown up. There are three ways to utilize a floating dock. If you are going to let it float, make sure to secure it in place with at least two anchors. Position the anchors so that the chain lies at a 45 degree angle and allow enough slack to absorb any waves or water level changes. If the water levels in your lake are stable, you can chain the floating dock to a stationary dock, but you will want to put some kind of buffer in between to absorb any wave action. But the best way to connect a floating dock to a stationary dock is with a ramp, using two Dock Edge Floating Connector Hinge Kits. These kits provide a strong and stable connection that will allow the floater to rise and fall with water levels. You will need two hinge kits, one for each side of the ramp, and you'll need 32 two and a half inch carriage bolts with lock washers and nuts. The length of the ramp needed will vary depending on the height of the stationary dock and any water level changes. In this case, a four foot by four foot ramp using pressure treated lumber and an inside corner kit was a perfect match. You can build a ramp like this in about three hours. With the ramp built and the hinges secure, it was just a matter of aligning the hinges and sliding the pins in place. Attaching the floating dock to this stationary dock more than doubled the space available on the water. For more information, please visit our website at dockedge.com.